SS Nighthawk. The question that we're looking to answer with this episode is what happens when Starfleet Intelligence decides to fly an exploration cruiser through an unknown sector of space? Will they stick to regular Federation morals or will they go slightly off the books? I'm interested to find out what happens. Hopefully you are too. Uh, with every, uh, we will be streaming every alternate Thursday, starting at 6 p.m. Pacific. If you miss the stream, please check out ELHMK1 on YouTube for a couple days after for the video. As with most of the, as is typical with most Star Trek streams, we will start off with a captain's log. So introducing Captain Luxor Arthur. Uh, please take it away. No problem. Captain's personal log, Stardate 82415.8. It has been quite some time since my arrival at Zero Station. Upon my arrival, I immediately set to work to prepare for my upcoming mission, purpose still unknown. Data pads among data pads, subspace briefings and communiques, all to politely tell me that it's classified, and I'll soon be given my next assignment. And now that seems like the time is finally soon upon me. I received orders to begin the shakedown of the USS Nighthawk, a ship more fitted for reconnaissance than explorations. But I suppose that seems fitting given that this is a mission at the behest of Starfleet intelligence. The final frontier is filled with true wonders, and Starfleet was tasked to seek them out in all of its forms, including potential threats. The one thing I can't call an annoyance to would be the compilation of my senior staff. They are a unique set of skills embedded within the crew of the Nighthawk, and getting to know these individuals further is a task I look forward to with great elation given time. It's not easy to build relationships without mutual knowledge, but all these officers carry with them the ability to excel, and if their anticipations are not exceeded, they will at least be subverted. All life is connected in more ways than one, and it can be easy to lose yourself in space. I hope that this crew and this ship will own to their, cho to their choices and to do what they think they cannot do. I make ready to prep our departure. Well done, Captain. So, it is early 2405, for those who keep track of the time stream. Uh, we are, we shall start on board stations, or zero station, which is a Starfleet intelligence facility that has not, that is located in a system that is not found on most star charts. Um, you have, uh, each of you has been here for roughly two to three days, if not longer in the captain's case and for the most part have been treated like mushrooms you've been kept in the dark and f fed well whatever it is that mushrooms are typically fed however the day has finally arrived you each receive your uh, departure orders and are told to stand at or meet a shuttle at a particular docking bay uh, the first is going to be the captain the captain will, sta will trundle down to his uh, docking catch and will see a shuttle pull up. Uh, this shuttle is not like most Starfleet shuttles. It is in called a Type XX and looks something like this. <clears throat> a fairly sleek reflective profile and has something what's called passive camouflage systems on board. Probably something Starfleet Intelligence. Uh, the shuttle pulls to a halt, and the standard hiss of an airlock opens, and the captain, C, wanders in and sees the pilot. Pilot Ensign Irkin Alak, who I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that name right. If not, feel free to correct me. Yep. Uh, so please describe your character, uh, Irkin. I uh, prefer Irkan, but that's okay. Irkan, very well. Uh, Irkan is a young, fresh out of Starfleet Academy Ensign. Uh, young, but with salt and pepper hair, a thin beard, a thin mustache to match. Uh, athletic build. Uh, swings around in his seat. Captain. Stands up. Stands in. And what does the captain look like, by chance? Oh, so Captain uh, Luxor Sengrel is a uh, half trill, half uh, betazoid. So he does possess empathic abilities. Um, he's of average height, uh, Caucasian, and obviously, since he has half trail, he does have that spot, those spots going along down the side of his face and body. Mm -hmm. 
in turn, well, at least the, the captain's going to respond to, you know, Ensign Arakan. Finally glad that he's been able to, you know, meet somebody else here of significance after quite some time of being stonewalled. So I'm glad to see that your arrival was here, was here with that incident. I, I trust that um, I am not. Uh, I have not been delayed in any way, shape, or form. The ship is nothing short of spectacular, and he gleams with pride, running his hands along the the freshly dusted consoles. Well, that's good to hear. Yes. Well, I mean, if, if your piloting skills are just as good as your. Uh as your confidence, then I'm sure we'll get along just great. I look forward to piloting your ship, Captain. All right. Captain can take a seat wherever he wishes as uh, Irkin pulls the shuttle out to the next destination where we will be meeting. I will not be moving the map around. I will be moving tokens. Careful, Captain. There's turbulence. <laughs> Inside of a dry dock. Hmm. <laughs> All right, we will then meet our next person, which would be Commander Bashir. And don't let that name fool you. He's actually an Andorian. Uh, Commander Bashir, uh, fairly similar situation. You're at a different docking bay on the inside of the dry dock. This very sleek shuttle pulls up, and the door hisses open. If you could please describe your character. Okay, I am Andorian. I have the silver and white hair tied back into a ponytail. Uh, I'm young, bookish. I was one of the first generation of the Andorians that after the whole genetic plague and uh, I enter, stand in full salute. Greetings, Captain. I look forward to this great adventure. Oh, at, at ease, Commander. The adventure hasn't started yet. But it's good, to, it's good to see that you're enthusiastic about the situation. We'll see how long that holds up. Yes, sir. And I'll take a seat. Hmm. Very well. Uh, ch you may choose your, sh your seat, as it won't be long until more of them fill up. Uh, the next stop on the dry dock pickup tour will be Commander Liam uh, Helsing. Before Liam goes on board, yes. I will turn to our pilot and I'll say, now the turbulence has arrived. Can you do Titan's turn in dry duck? I can do anything you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> or believe me, I've tested this vessel's capability outside of sensor range. Well, Wink. If, you're, if you want to try to pull some stunts in dry docks, uh, Urkin... That is, we could make our very first ever piloting check, if you'd like. Ah, oh, hell. I was ordered by the captain. Okay. Um, so, um, because there's quite a few new players in this particular stream, I will do my best to explain things more thoroughly than some streams might. Uh, so please, everyone, be patient, especially if we get something wrong. Uh, so what I'm going to ask you to do, Urkan, is to make a... Uh, ch a piloting check, which in this case will be daring plus con. And I'm going to set, because of the tight space, I'm going to set the, diff the difficulty at two, which means you need to make two successes in order to pass this test. Otherwise, fun things might happen. We all roll new characters. <laughs> You're all court-martialed, and this game is set off for another two months, two Ah, two weeks while everyone re-rolls. <laughs> uh, dice pools 2d20? 2d20, that's correct. And uh, focus would be if you happen to have like small craft or precision maneuvering or... Sure do. Okay. Small craft it is. There you go. I'm watching this and I'm going to start buckling my seatbelt. <laughs> that would be wise. <laughs> um, so you, ha you only have one success, which means you don't make the test. However... Um, I did forget one extra thing, is that the shuttle can assist. So if someone wishes to pull up the sh uh, Type XX shuttle uh, sheet, and I have it up. they can assist with uh, engines plus um, engines plus con for this. And you only get one dice for an assist roll. Okay. 
And the ship has a focus. Uh, ship. Yep, the ship is always assumed to have a focus. There's that success. There we go. Okay, so Urkan, you sweat for a split second, and then you realize that the ship's uh, guts has some pretty fancy um, auto com uh, auto maneuvering thrusters that kick in at the last second. So you may know that you might not have made it quite well, but the captain seems satisfied with the maneuver. As you, so instead of uh, gliding into this one, you more like do a 360 degree spin and sort of power slide right into the airlock door. Uh, Liam, uh, Lieutenant Commander Liam Helsing is you know, surrounded by several folks that are a little surprised by the maneuver. But we'll see what he does when he walks in. Uh, so, Lieutenant Commander, if you could please describe yourself. Um, Liam Helsing's about upper 30s years old, um, fairly fit, as a security officer should be. Um, gentlemen, did I just see what I thought I just saw? Y'all coming into the, the air dock? Just testing out the new ship, sir. Well, I'll tell you, from a tactical point of view, having a pilot who can do that, that opens up a lot of possibilities. Well, you see what we want you to say. <laughs> and finally, as every, everyone settles in, the... Do you wish to do any more daring maneuvers, or before you pick up uh, Lieutenant Commander Shraz? Uh, I think one was enough for now. There's, you know, it's there's senior officers on board. I can't risk all of their lives. That's very that's a very mature uh, piloting attitude, I must say. Very well. So our final pickup is Lieutenant Commander Shraz, uh, who happens to also be an Andorian. Uh, the door op the doorway opens and Lieutenant Commander Shras steps through. So I, I literally just got back from picking oh. my food. I actually didn't hear anything. So. Ah, that's so. Apologies. That's fine. Um, Lute the shuttle has just docked at the airlock to pick you up on the way to, on the yeah on the way to the station on the way to the starship. So you walk in and you see all these friendly faces. Fantastic. Uh, is this all the the crew? I presume. That's right. Well, then I look forward to us having uh, fantastic adventures on this. I sure hope it's a hell of a lot more exciting than my last assignment. In that case, excitement is relative. You'll know soon enough. Well, I can't wait. All right. All right, if anybody has anything else they'd like to say to one another on the way to the ship, it will be roughly a 10-minute, about a 5-minute flight, really. 10 if you want to make long, dramatic, uh, panoramic shots of the ship. Is this the first time that we've seen it? This or is indeed do we the first, This is the first time that you've, been, that you've seen the ship. Up until oh. now, all you've had is tech spec manuals, possibly a glimpse outside of a of a passing window but this is literally the first time you are setting foot on it oh then i will spend as long as the scene as long as the captain allows me to just gawking at her doing slow circles i will allow one uh five minute motion picture uh enterprise flyby beauty shot but only one very well so you all fly with uh El Sorry, it was Elkar? Elker. With Elker at the helm, you fly around er the dry dock. Urkan. Urkan, I'm sorry. That's okay. I will get this thing figured out eventually. Uh, you fly out past the docking controls, and there she is, just sort of hanging with a couple struts still attached to her that are slowly being pulled away as you, s as you get close. Uh, the USS Nighthawk. Um, a little, little, little whistle. Whew. Not bad, not bad. Can't wait to get my, my hands inside of her. I stifle a chuckle. Uh, 
well, I asked the rest of the crew, have any of you ever actually served on a vessel similar to that? Not at all. Only read about it in magazines. Well, I assure you, it smells definitely, even it exceeds what you read, but I'll don't take too much stock into tech specifications. We're going to make it ours. I mean, who has time to read tech specifications anyway? I mean, um, you should. Ah, that's overrated. It's, it's all about intuition. I got tons of that. And Liam looks over as he's sticking like four or five data pads back into his bag full of tech spec. <laughs> uh, this all happened. I like, I love it. Don't you worry. I don't need to read a thing. I, I get a look at it. I'll figure it out. I mean, if you can't walk these corridors blind by like the end of the week, then we're gonna don't we're gonna have any some issues. I got some Give expectations. Like Give me like two hours. With all due respect, Captain, that sounds like both a challenge and some fun. It should. Woohoo! Uh, Can't wait to see what that baby can do. All right. We're, we're still looking at the starbase, but uh, you pull into the rear of the ship and dock into the shuttle bay. Uh, there is a man who is waiting for you. Um, the captain will at least recognize him. Who? That would be the transporter room, not the shuttle bay. Let's get to onto the shuttle bay. <clears throat> the ship pulls in. Once the uh, shuttle bay depressure or repressurizes, in walks a m older human with a suit and tie. You don't recognize. Most of you don't recognize him, but the captain does. Uh, that man is. Oddly enough, you guys can't see it. There we go. Director Chalmers, uh, head of Starfleet Intelligence Research and Development Program, and the unofficial commander of Station Zero. I will get your tokens and place them on here somehow. I will figure this out eventually. And he will walk out and extend a warm hand in greeting towards the captain. Sam will absolutely take it. Direct Chalmers, it's so nice to see you face to face. Ah, Captain, it is a pleasure to f have you on board. I'm sorry that we c couldn't expose more of the ship to you and your senior staff ahead of time, but, well, need to know, and you didn't need to know until now. I've been told, oh, so many times. Either way. And he will greet each one of you in turn um, as soon as I. After I greet him, I ask Captain permission to start wandering around the, the ship blindfolded. At that point, the captain is just kind of going to look at him. He's just going to give him the look where he's like, yeah, but not right now. <sighs> Very well. Director Chalmer. I am more than willing to give you a guided tour of the ship if you're interested, Chief Engineer. Or if you uh, yes, please. yes, please. Yes, please. Or Ken can barely contain his excitement. <laughs> I'm more interested in the nature of our mission, this Director Chalmers. Ah, yes. We will get to that fairly quickly. Let's suffice it to say you are going where Starfleet Intelligence has not gone before. And hopefully we'll bring something back. You see a smile come across Liam's face. <laughs> Picard used to say that. Right. <laughs> so at point, at what point, and how quickly will be able, how will, will we be able to get up to speed? Relatively quickly, Captain. Just a quick shakedown cruise, test test the systems, and then you will be rendezvousing with your escort ship. That will take you where you need to go. Now, so, uh, which of you guys wish to partake in a quick tour of some of the interesting places on the ship, or which of you just wish to go to your assigned duty stations? I suppose tour. I should be part of the tour. Tour. Yep. Tour as well. Okay, I'm hearing a lot of people going on tours, so... Well, that's a new ship. Indeed. Very Gotta well. know what areas to protect. Star Tours. Yes. 
<laughs> first, first sight will be the sick bay. Captains, this captain, crew, this is obviously the sick bay. Hopefully, you won't have to spend too much time in here. He tries to make a joke, but it more likely comes off as a dead. Uh, it can't even be revived in sick bay. Let's just say that. Now, due to the whole AI running section 31 kind of thing, we've sort of scrapped all EMH programs. Oddly enough, the doctor seems happy with that. And he nods over to uh, Dr. Chromie Tishok, or Tish, Tishok, who just sort of nods, waves, and re resumes filing all sorts of uh, medicines and running around. This is en uh, Ensign Ira Zin, will be the head nurse of this illustrious sick bay. Um, Captain, as you're half Beta Z, you immediately recognize that he is a full Beta Z. And he will mentally reach out to you and uh, just sort of probe you just, and just nod silently and go, Captain. I look back at him and I'm just saying, well, nice. I look forward to saving with you. The feeling is mutual, Captain. And then he'll speak vocally to every and repeat the sentiment to everyone here. Now, the most interesting portion of the tour, if you'll follow me, folks. And he will bring you all down to engineering. I was hoping for more shuttle bays. <laughs> Paste. Ah, here's the good stuff. Uh, he walks in and just spreads his arms wide. This vessel is not the fastest ship in the fleet. Only can go about warp 9.2. Hey, roughly about 875 if you want to keep her hidden from whatever else might be out there. But she'll get you where you need to go. And in pretty good time, I might say. Hidden? As in there's some sort of cloaking device on the vessel? Absolutely not. That would be completely and utterly illegal and against the spirit of the accords we struck with the Romulans about... 85 years ago. No, this ship just utilizes a series of holographic projectors to sort of disguise it. But, well, he sort of hides. I, I'm told that's legal by those that tell me such things. However, if you happen to come across Romulans, maybe don't use it. Or use it so well and you don't get caught. Either way. I just wink Gotcha. <laughs> I'm sure the Treaty of Algernon has very specific provisions on what we can and can't do out here, and I expect to follow them thoroughly. I appreciate that, Captain. As the mission intends. Uh, uh, poking his head out from behind the warp core's uh, reactor is a bald Vulcan. Fairly tall chap. Uh, he's And he looms over the safety railing as if the safety railing would not really stop him from falling falling over it, but he doesn't seem to mind. Captain, Chief Engineer, I am Lieutenant Cassatt. I look forward to serving with you. You have had some interesting adventures. And I look forward to serving with you as well. Captain, Chief and director Ch without so much as a hand wave from the second deck lieutenant chalmers leads you to your next place now this is a state portion of the ship that i'm really proud of the boffins really put their uh put the midnight oil into all this welcome to your data analysis lab you've probably seen the sense you've, <laughs> you've probably seen the sense the uh, readouts of our high fidelity sensors um like apparently they collect far too much data to be told to be outputted at in real time to a single console so the boffins put this thing in place don't really know how it works told that it works well hmm. well i look forward to most getting to spend a lot of time here. 
if the, if the nature of our mission is uh, what I anticipated, then I'm sure we're going to be spending you know more time than necessary, but as much time as we need. There will be uh, there's there will be lots to do, and this thing should be able to. There will be lots to see, lots to do. This thing should hopefully capture most of it. Anything that it doesn't capture is most likely not important. And he gives you a giant wink. Is that a holographic display in the center corner? It can be used as such, yes. It will... Mm. Minimal fidelity. With the recent mm. issue... With recent issues with uh, holograms becoming sentient and are they life forms or not, we've decided to forego the ship-wide holographic field emitters that plague... I mean are installed on many exploration, long-term exploration cruisers. Quite frankly, just don't trust the lights. Nope, we're all, we're all skin and bones here, Captain. And possibly, and whatever the heck the Horta on Deck 12 is made of. Whatever Horta? Starfleet in <laughs> Yes, the Horta in Starfleet. It was a political, he claimed political asylum. We didn't ask questions. Whatever Starfleet intelligence thinks belongs to the nature of our mission, you know, I'm all for it. Seems like a very cheerful chap. Once the uh, once the uh, boffins got his uh, voice <laughs> modulator working right. Ugh. I didn't even know they could voice. Nor did I. Fascinating. Indeed. He's. Seem cheerful enough. We're probably willing to share a drink or whatever the heck they eat. Rocks, as far as I know. Indeed. Ha. High iron diet. <laughs> Anyways. I'm sure this is the area in which you're most interested in. And the scene changes so quickly he doesn't even stop. The turbo lift doesn't even seem to break his uh, train of thought. Welcome to the bridge. Uh, Captain, I'm not allowed on the bridge. <laughs> Apparently. There we go. Thank you. And, uh, the director immediately goes to sit in the captain's chair, realizes that, oh, there's actually a captain on the ship now, and he will go into the chair that is typically reserved for the first officer. At that point, Sangwa will look to him and just say, yeah, that's for the best. Agreed. Uh, the ensign, who is tapping away on a series of consoles in the far corner, just raises her head and says, Captain on the bridge? Oh, I was too late, wasn't I? Sorry? You were, but at this point, I'm not going to grade you. Ensign, uh... Ensign Rani, sir. I am your... I'm the Nighthawk's operations officer. Ah, all right. Well, pleasure to meet you, Ensign Rani. Look forward to this to going on the continuing mission together. Yes, sir. I'm. This should be a great challenge. I have no idea where we're going, but I look forward to seeing it. Uh, seeing what's out there. All things in due time. And with that, I look back to Director Chalmers. I'm just going to be like, "Well, tell yes. me the rest. Tell me about my ship." Very well, Captain. Uh, you should all have a handout now, called Shakedown Cruise System Test. Captain, these are what the boffins tell me are the mandatory systems that should be given a quick run through before your expedition. Once the, oh, uh, once all the systems have passed muster, uh, you will meet up with the USS Contiki at in subspace coordinates, and he'll rattle off a series of random numbers that aren't too far away from here. They will then take you to, uh, that will then. Use this quantum slipstream tunnel technology stuff to take you far, far away to some place called the Lasai Expanse. I don't know. Apparently, they've found some remnants of Borg technology and a bunch of civilizations out there. Might be a good idea to see what the Borg left behind and what these civilizations are doing now. Heck, if they survived the Borg, they might know there might be some interesting technology out there for us. Urkan practically falls out of his chair when he comes to the same conclusion that this has slipstream. Oh! Oh! Uh, just read about these in papers, sir. It's, it's an honor and a privilege to serve. 
babble, babble, uh, babble, babble. Ah, uh, sorry, Ensign. This this ship doesn't have quantum slipstream drive. Too damned expensive. No, the Contiki is a quantum slipstream tug. It will open the tunnel for, and then do that linking computer synchronization thing that they do to make sure that your ship doesn't fall out of the tunnel, crash into a, some ice planet, and some something something alternate timelines temporal of investi the temporal investigation agency told me not to speak of it hey there's nothing nothing wrong with ice worlds oh <laughs> sorry i <clears throat> yes right anyways i'll be on i'll be in the i'll be on vip quarters until it's time to meet up with the <clears throat> sorry i'll be in vip quarters until it's time to meet up with the contiki <laughs> If you need anything, Captain, you can find me on Deck 3. Well, very well, Director. Before you go, once yes. we do meet up with the Contiki, uh, what are our orders after we arrive in the site? Basically, whatever the heck the orders are given to the USS Enterprise or whatever Starfleet deems necessary for their exploration cruiser, uh, seek out new life, new civilizations, um, possibly see what they've done to survive the Borg, and between you and me, Captain, and I suppose the rest of us on this bridge, if there's anything that you find out there that could benefit the Federation against the Typhon Pact, or whoever else is around the corner to threaten us, that would be greatly appreciated. Just because the Borg left, uh, were taken a... F uh, how long ago was it? Uh, 30 years back... Doesn't mean all of our problems just turned into fairies and flew away. Of that, I most definitely understand. Well, hmm. have fun, guys. And with that, he will wander past and head down, head into the turbo lift, and go into a plot hole for a while. <laughs> Well, in that case, I'm going to address the crew on the bridge. And so I'm going to get up in my chair and just look around the nice, beautiful shot of the bridge and then turn to the rest of the crew and just say, at this moment on, the mission begins. I'm a very fun and easygoing person, but at the same time, I'm here to do what we came here to do. And I expect all of you to do this. You heard Director Chalmers and you heard our orders. Let's get the Shakedown crews underway. So... Ensign Arcan, I trust you have the ability to pilot us, uh, pilot us out of space dock safely. With pleasure, sir. That in that case, by all means, you have <laughs> you have my permission. All right. <clears throat> okay, so right. the the next check will this will be a fairly similar, except this will be a control plus engineering. Or no, sorry, control plus like con. Thank you. And the ship will assist with a um, engines plus con check. This will be a difficulty of one. Control plus con. I'm assuming you guys know how to get out of a space dock, but we'll find out. I have the ship up if nobody else does. Yep. Okay, uh, helm operations focus. That would work. Okay. okay, so that is a grand total of four successes. Uh, so because you guys have beaten the... Uh, difficulty by a by anything you get to turn those extra successes into momentum which can be used to do awesome things like buy extra dice um, re-roll uh, any challenge dice that are zeros and I'm sure there's a and they are very handy in combat uh, so there should you should see a little uh, deck of Starfleet insignias off to the lower right of your screen so if someone could just please keep track of those by just drawing three of them. I will draw three. All right. Three. Excellent. And when it comes time to spend them, feel free just to open it up, drag it onto the desktop or the playing area, and then just delete it. Okay. Uh, you can have a maximum of six. Uh, so any momentum that is earned after that cannot be... Well, cannot be stored. It has to be spent immediately to ask questions or perform other things. Um, and that's six, six for the whole party, not six individual. Yeah, this is a party, a party pool. Okay, it just it's over my icon. That I was just yeah. specific to me. You're not. Nope. It, 
you're you were just you're just the person that has de facto assumed that they will be keeping track of group momentum. Evidently, yes. Okay. So wow, with... the ship handles like butter. Oh. Yeah. So with a great, with a very graceful soundtrack in the background, most likely low brass and some violins over top, uh, the do the dry dock opens and the ship exits flawlessly. And now the shakedown cruise begins. So that is, I believe, the first uh, check of what needs to be done. So thruster control. Well, that's wonderful. And keep us, keep us here at a one quarter impulse, and slowly bring us to full impulse. Hard to port, ten degrees pitch. I will do that to the best of my ability. All right. Uh, just because I think it's funny, everyone, please roll me a. Let's do fitness plus security with a difficulty of two to see how well they handle the sudden shift of balance. So do I just click both of those things? Or yeah, how, so how you, you, will, uh, you click the fitness button, and then it will ask yeah. you for a uh, oh, okay, which one to choose. Uh, then you can select two dice from a pool. And if you have a focus that would apply, such as something like fitness, gymnastics, acrobatics, drunken revelry okay. Martial artist? <laughs> Martial artist would work. Okay, so... Okay, so everybody except for the captain and Urken will uh, pitch mm -hmm. and sway rather violently as the ship sort of overcompensates. Um, everybody, the set shakes and everybody else falls to the right. I thought, oh. what is this going on? Check these inertial dampeners, please. Yes, sir, everything reports green, just as quite sensitive is all. The last ship I served on was a training ship, so a bit more forgiving in its acceleration. Aha. Uh -huh. Nonetheless, I'd still like a uh, level 2 diagnostic. I hope this isn't a sign of things to come for the rest of this mission. <laughs> all right. So... Uh, Shras has just been ordered to do a diagnostic whenever it is convenient. We can work with that between scenes if necessary. Okay. We'll just... uh, that... yeah, if... Sorry, feel free to... Engineer? You have... Um, don't feel that you have to stay on the bridge. You're more than welcome to head down to engineering or uh, pull up an auxiliary control up here on the bridge if you'd like to stick around and see what's going on. And just because your token's on the bridge doesn't mean you have to stay yep. here. Unless you're the yep, captain. I'll probably head down to engineering. Okay. So, Shras heads down to engineering. And we'll just... What would that be? What role would that be to do the test? Um, so, f a full diagnostic would be something along the lines of insight plus engineering, but uh, we don't have to. Something like that can just easily be role played. Okay. Yeah. Unless you unless <laughs> you'd like to get the practice, in which case that would be a, an insight engineering with a. Difficulty of two to try to find the problem. Uh, and if uh, if someone wants to pick up Lieutenant Cassatt, he is more than welcome to assist. <clears throat> right, two successes. Oh, all right. So if uh, Cassatt has the ability to generate momentum here, I'll go ahead and roll for Cassatt. Sure. What's the roll going to be? Uh, insight Engineering. Uh, Oops, you, I am. Yep, you, only, you should have only rolled one dice, but that's I fine. Didn't. You would get one success, so that's an, one extra momentum. Nice. Yes. Uh, um, actually, uh, Shras, it is something that you're pretty... It's something you've seen several times before, primarily because it's a circuit that you have left unchecked in previous... Uh, in previous tasks. It's a fairly simple rewiring t of the... Um, of the manifolds on the in the bridge ah sloppy work all right That's, that seems like a simple fix to, to do all right everyone on the bridge just sort of feels slightly more settled after 10 minutes or so <coughs> all 
Alright. So that would be a that would be a successful thruster control and impulse, I believe. So w next up is the warp test. Well, in that case, Helm, you know the drill. No, on my no. order, on my order, take us to a, uh, take us to warp. Locking in coordinates. Mm -hmm. um, activating warp drive. There is was a brief bit of confusion as I have referred to Urkan as an ensign when he should actually be a lieutenant. So an immediate that was Field me promotion. just not reading his character sheet when I was making things. I apologize. Field promotion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, not, not yet. <laughs> there we go. That should be put right. Th put thrusters in. Gained a level. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. With my newfound lieutenant skills. Uh, inputting in coordinates. Okay. And we're off. You are off. If you didn't have... Control. Uh, you... Control con. I wouldn't put... This isn't going to be a test. If you hadn't any momentum, yeah. I would have made this difficulty zero. But you have... All right. Um, you should have, be at four momentum now, I believe. So, okay. Um, and I just got distracted by prom by promoting a Lieutenant Urkin. So you just committed warp speed? Yes, to the designated and... coordinates. Fantastic. Uh, nice slow warp to start, and then speeding it up. Okay. How fast do you want to take it? Uh, oh, sorry. Well, I think that's going to probably be a captain's order, right? Yeah, so sure, let's yeah. keep us keep us at warp one for a while, and then slowly ramp us up to a uh, seven point seven five. Yes, sir. All in all, the uh, the ship handles fairly well. Um, again, you have good momentum, so I'm not going to bother making rolls. So the ship mm. handles fairly. Now you're well. first officer. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. <laughs> it's a sm it's a smooth operation. Um, the sh the sh the ship sort of gl you feel gliding through space rather than what some of the more bulkier exploration cruisers might do. Even though your the logical part of your brain says that every ship feels this way going through warp, it's just something about this sleek profile that just makes it feel all the smoother. Hmm. It well, would, at 775, it would take roughly an hour's trip to warp to the Altemis sector. If anyone wishes to do anything during this hour, please let me know. Well, at this point, um, I'd actually like to get some crew into the sensor analysis lab earlier before we actually arrived at the Altemis sector, just oh. so we could start, you know, actually seeing all this advanced data that the ship is putting out. Well done. Okay. Um, I don't have a, a... I haven't made a supporting character yet for sensor... Op, like a full sensor operations data person. Mm -hmm. um, so if you'd like to come up with one on the fly, we can do that. Or we'll just say that um, Ensign so-and-so... Nope, sorry. We have a so-and-so on Cerberus. We shouldn't have two. Uh, some, en, some Ensign is in uh, data analysis and ready to go. Oh, well, I would never... I'm sure there's an ensign right there, but, you know, I need my senior staff to be familiar with all parts of this ship. All right. So I'm going to commit my engineer to this desk. Okay. All right. Uh, so, Shras, you're down on the bridge, or you're down mm -hmm. in engineering, and I believe you've been given orders to... And Head what about your the science data. officer? I was going to say, I would be... Oh, of course, my science officer can see. join, too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, excuse me, Captain. Um, I would love to see uh, play with the new toy. <laughs> okay, so we are taking the cap. I am. We're taking the captain and Sh Bashir, as well as the engineer. Cool. Okay, we are back in the data analysis lab. Chalmers is gone. Kirkin is gone. Sheer is here. Shras is here. I'm never going to mix those two up. Never. And the captain. <clears throat> Welcome to the data analysis lab, where this thing will tell you pretty much what the Breen are doing on their home world if you had enough time. Um, a fairly multi, a multi-spectral 
uh, sensor array has been th has been planted inside the f almost the entire forward sections of the Squire class vessel. In fact, it's one of the reasons why there is an an air gap in the design structure. It's to actually prevent people who are living in the uh, crew quarters in that area uh, from getting all sorts of tingles, sensory um, or extrasensory experiences, and it might play havoc with some of the telepaths. Um, so that's the reason for the air gap is to provide extra shielding and basically to protect everyone else. Mm -hmm. My antenna are tingling. <laughs> Well, at this point, I'm going to move Sengrel, and I'm going to move him to at least one of these these archives displays, and re I'm going to reformat the screen so it actually still gives me dis data from the bridge, so I could still see how fast we're approaching our destination. Of course. At, at the same time, I'm going to look over to my other two officers. Well, before we actually arrive there, I'd like to necessarily see what this uh, what this sensor suite can do. So okay. by all means, take a station and uh, tell me what you see. Okay. All right. So, this will be a good time to highlight one of the talents on the USS Nighthawk, which mm -hmm. is the high, uh, what's it, high resolution sensors. Uh, so, when you're not in combat, any t any task or any successful task that is assisted by the ship's sensors will gain you one bonus momentum. And a common a common use for momentum is asking questions. Um, I will, of course, give you enough information on a success, and sometimes even on a fail. But using uh, being able to spend momentum allows players to ask me questions based on that and gain further info. And as much as I would like to do otherwise at times, I must. If you spend momentum to ask questions, I must tell you the truth. Okay. All kinds. Yeah. Yes. You know, I am a benevolent GM. Okay, so. Uh, all right, so. Well, uh, Lieutenant Commander, I'd like you to necessarily use the ship's sensors to scan us externally. Um, without using internal sensors, I would like you to tell me exactly what exactly the power output of this ship is and uh, exactly where our heading is and, re and our power relation in terms to everything else around us. And science officer, I'd like you to necessarily scan, you know, the external space and subspace and all other uh, multi-spectrum suites that are available to you. Aye, aye, Captain. I run to one of the councils. All right. Okay, so... Would that be insight plus science or the engineering? That would be... Uh, so he, he's asked you for more engineering kind of things, so I will allow yeah. you to roll insight plus engineering, and Bashir can roll me uh, insight science. This will be a difficulty two for each as the ship is currently at warp, and you're using external sensors, not internal. Mm. Oh no, only one, one success. One success, but now the ship can also assist with uh, sensors plus science or sensors plus engineering, depending on which one you're rolling. So if someone has uh. the ship open. <clears throat> uh, I have the ship open. Okay. Sensors plus... Sensors plus uh, science. Yeah. Or engineering, you said? Yeah, well, one, one check for each, please. Okay, one check for each? Yeah, because you kind of need it. I'm just double-checking my talents, just trying to see... I wrote down the names, but I can't remember what they actually do. Yeah, I've, I found it easier to actually copy the full text of the talent into the... Um, ch ch ah, the chair, the character. Yeah, sheet. I should probably yeah, do that. Most definitely. It allows you to easily reference it when it comes yeah. up. Yeah. And the ship is always assumed to have a focus, so that is, uh, that's the shuttlecraft sensors uh, there. Yeah. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a success right. either way, which is actually quite <laughs> impressive. So that's amazing. You figured out yeah. the shuttle. I just clicked on the one that I thought was the prettiest. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it is a pretty nice shuttle. I'm it's not, a pretty great looking shuttle. I'm not entirely sure who made it, but well, I should do, probably do a shout out on DeviantArt or on the stream next time. All right, so that was a science one, so yep. let's do that one this time with the actual ship. Engineering. And that's a critical success, so you get Ooh. one extra momentum from that. 
Okay, so, uh, Lieutenant Commander Shras, uh, you are able to give the captain readouts down to the, uh, uh, let's see, the deciwatt of current power being generated, uh, whereas, as well as pretty much everything else he asked, I admittedly went by far too quick for me to, um, to keep track of. Wibbly wobbly techno bubbles. Yep. Precisely. And, there you go, Captain. And Commander Bashir, uh, you are able to, even at warp speed, the um, the uh, resolution on what you're seeing is capable of pretty ca- is pretty comparable to that of a survey vessel that has been specifically built to scan systems at at a full stop. Uh, so even though you're passing by them faster than the speed of light, you're still able to pick up, you know, uh, this is a class D star with five worlds, uh, three asteroids, and is emitting strange microwaves at such and such a frequency. Can I accent, uh, uh, like basically transfer it to the big screen so I can show like 3D of what's going on? <laughs> oh, absolutely. They're using the little hollow station. You're able to project your... Uh, a binary star system where which is currently in the process of collapse the odd thing is when the the data this data lab has already correlated or correlated it with few, eh, with past survey responses or past surveys and has noted that this system is in a decline about 10% faster than predicted by the last survey vessel fascinating and captain the ship is still at 7.75 because Urkin has not told me he's going any faster well that's great well take us to uh, as close as maximum warp as you can well obviously I'm going to tap my com badge and come back to the bridge and radio in, radio that uh, order in hi hi captain bringing okay. her up all right the Thanks to uh, Shras's uh, earlier fix, the ship just goes all the more faster, but you guys are still moving at the same pace. There's no jolts, sudden shifts, anything of the like. And at this speed, it'll take roughly 10 minutes to reach your destination. I'll get that. Did I just hear a call from Captain? Uh, yes, sir. Got a question for you. We got the um, this improved camp camouflage system. Do you think it works at work? I think that's something that uh, I'm eager to find out, but not at this moment. Roger that. All right. Well, I have uh, no other orders to necessarily give here. So, and since I've gotten my information, I'd, I'm gonna let us return to the bridge. Very well. I am going to stay here, and I'd like to do some research on the expanse that he mentioned, and uh, basically look up information about what happened to the Borg and start studying up on what he said that is our future quote-unquote mission. Very well. I am I will give you that information at a slightly later time, if that's all right. No problem. Uh, Lieutenant, or... Er- Chief Engineer Shras, are you sticking around I'm, or are you heading back somewhere? I'm going to wander around and start sticking my hands in, in some guts. Okay. So we will come back to Shras shortly. Uh, let's see. Copy here. As Shras continues to walk up and down the, um, the corridors, I turn on inter- interior force fields at different areas just to slow them down a little, make them, and then turn them off again. <laughs> okay. So I turn around, I raise my eyebrow, I was like, really? T- are... testing, out, testing out the uh, shipboard tactical systems. Uh-huh. Maybe I'll be doing some um, engineering tests the next time uh, you're, you're sleeping, too. <laughs> okay, this is going to be a fun crew already. I can just see it. Yeah. I thought you had to be blindfolded. <laughs> <laughs> Who says I'm not, I'm not going to be? Yeah. Wall. Force field. Uh, yeah. oh. Oh. Okay. Back on the bridge. We go. It would help if I moved the players. 
Okay, you emerge at the uh, Altimus sector. It is a fairly sta it's a fairly barren system. This looks like it has a failed uh, uh, a failed planetary uh, creation. There's several debris rings of asteroids. It's a small brown dwarf system. Far too many of them around. And this one doesn't even look like it has any useful minerals, so it's been pretty much ignored by the Federation as a whole. So, um, there is a couple things that are catching your interest. Uh, two two uh, small buoys, uh, modified Class 4 probes, have been launched ahead of time by Station Zero to emit various signals to test the fidelity of your scanners and the effectiveness of your weaponry. Wonderful. Well, in that case, let's uh, scan a seek and then destroy. All right. So, um, excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, I'm definitely gonna uh, give the orders to uh, my science officer. Like, it's, let's go uh, scan these buoys. He's not on the bridge. He's in engineer. Or no, I'm still. Yeah. I'm still aware about. Yeah, I'm talking to myself. I should not be doing that during oh. the I apologize. <laughs> That's confusing. Yeah, what's the, you know... Oh, look, he's back on the bridge. What the hell? That's the wrong buttons. I'll figure the stream stuff out eventually. You know, I've only been using Roll20 now for how many years? Okay. It's a shakedown, Chris, for all of us. Indeed it is. Okay. Uh, so down in the lab, if you wish to roll another... Uh, sis, uh, sensors plus science scan uh, with a um, just due to the sensors I'm going to I'm going to spend some threat uh, threat is a pool I I get to make your lives a little more difficult whenever I see fit uh, thank you're lucky I do have only a limited supply of it unless various roles or player actions generate me more so for this case, I'm going to spend some threat and give, uh, make the diff, uh, bump the difficulty by one. So this will be a sensors science difficulty three, and the ship can okay. assist. Alrighty. Um, anybody know offhand what computer expertise does? Is that a talent or just a bonus? That a, yeah. Talent. Ah. Um, I can find out uh, real quick. I have it here. Uh, when you attempt a task that involves programming or study of a computer system, you can add a bonus d20. I think that forks here. No, I, I don't think it does. You're trying to just okay. scan a probe, not rewire okay. the computer system or um, try to figure out an alien system, I'm afraid. Oh, okay. Now, I'll still can, use momentum. Yep. <laughs> so you can buy one dice with one momentum, and then the second dice can be bought with an extra two. All right, we're at five. I'll go two. Uh, yes. If you want two yep. dice, that will cost a grand total of three momentum. Oh, okay. So I'll just take the one. Okay. We don't need to waste that yet. Okay. And no focus. I'm at a complication now. Oh. Let's see if the ship. Let's see what the ship rolls. So who is rolling for ship? Oh yes, yeah, I saw someone rolling the ship. Sorry, <laughs> uh, sorry, there's something at the door. What do you yeah. want to? Yeah. Uh, roll the ships. Control and science. Yep, control science and um, Erkin. They've spent one momentum, so if you can please. Dragon trap. There we go. Yeah. Uh, you should just be able to click on it. And press delete. Okay. And what would the ship's uh, uh, systems and department be? Uh, that would be uh, sensor science for the ship. Roger. Oh, that would be a critical. That's a critical. So you do beat it. Now you could. I roll it half for the ship. Yeah. You yes. Can spend, yeah. Sorry. You can spend one momentum to cancel that critical. So the momentum you just gained could immediately negate the critical failure. That sounds wonderful to me. Okay. 
So everything pulls uh, the data analysis not only tells you everything, including the probe's serial number, it will run a full collation and tell you precisely where each part was manufactured, where the probe was assembled, and how it got here in the first place. Needless to say, a pretty successful test. I send all the information up to the bridge and go back to my research. <laughs> well, at that point, the information is received. And at that and the pro, I suppose, has now outlived its usefulness to us. Most likely. So Roger that, sir. Now I'll go bring this to tactical. Okay, so the ship has phaser arrays or photon torpedoes. Um, firing, if you wish to fire a torpedo, it does generate, th I do get threat if you do, but because this is shakedown cruise and it's not something that will fire back, I will forego it in this instance. Um, using an a phaser is, I believe, a control plus security with a difficulty of two. And the ship can assist with weapons plus security. Roger. And I have uh, shipboard tactical, so I guess that's the focus. That would work. Okay, let's see what the ship does. That's one success. And the ship would be... Uh, weapons plus security. Weapons security. All right. Who's rolling ship? Um, I have right. Oh, all right. I clicked, I clicked the wrong. It happens. And... Oh, I found a fail. Uh, oh, as lucky oh. as these rolls are, I think it's most prudent of myself to at least attempt to assist him in this task <laughs> as captain. Okay. So I'll go ahead and well, try to use the advisor talent. Okay. And uh, what does that do again? All right. So the advisor talent allows me to, uh, if I give an order to one of uh, another character, they have the ability to uh, re-roll 1d20 oh. using my command discipline. Perfect. So... Uh, you are more than so, Liam. You can oh. re-roll one d twenty, and that was Roger. so. It's using the captain's command. Yeah, it's using my command, which is at a uh, five. Out of five, okay. So another control plus command of value, whatever value you have, that's five would be would work here. Okay, be security. All right, that works. 1d20 and there's a critical so you get yet one more momentum the array misfires the first time however a quick uh, recalibration on these on the lieutenant commander's panel and the array quickly refocuses and pierces the class 4 probe through its little uh, transmission module uh, you see, out of the corner of your eye, you see Ensign Vault Rani just sort of make a yes motion before realizing that someone might be watching her and she just goes back to her duties. Yeah. And I go ahead and kind of stifle my yes as well. Yeah, likewise. Yes. <laughs> I'm still bumping into force fields. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, ah, damn it. Oh, it's like whack an engineer. Well, let me turn that one down. Uh, so, Shras, just because I think this will be an amusing side scene, uh, thanks to the, uh, either deliberate or not, your uh, hollow, your force field maze shall place you in the mess hall. <laughs> also because I haven't shown off this particular scene yet, so. Uh, there are, it's a pretty empty scene at the moment. There is a bartender in the uh, background but the the squire class has a fairly low crew complement as it is and most of them are busy either doing the last minute re last minute tests uh, p before this ship actually gets underway uh, bartender looks up to you and goes ah oh, you're one of the new blue people uh, sorry you're one of the ch you're the chief engineer right that i am What'll, what'll it be? 
Uh, something with no force fields. Kind of looking around, making sure there's nothing else stop popping up in my way. He raises an eyebrow. I'm not familiar with that drink, sir. Uh, why don't you, why don't you surprise me and give me something uh, nice, nice and red? Nice and red. Gotcha. Hmm. He pauses for a split second, pulls out three different bottles, and will, and despite none of them actually being red, uh, the final concoction makes a small pop sound as the color undergoes an immediate chemical reaction and turns bright red. Wow, now you're just a great old wizard, aren't you? He shrugs. I took my major in chemistry, sir. They don't allow hmm. civilians on this ship, so... It's what I it's what I did in Starfleet Academy, and quite frankly, I like serving drinks and acting as occasional counselor to those that need it. Fair enough. I take a sip. Hmm, not bad. It's... Tastes nice and um, red. Glad you like it, I sir. Don't have, I don't have a very refined palate. <laughs> he does a bit of a stage whisper. I won't tell anyone if you won't. Great. Yeah, I'll, I'll. Um, I guess we still got a bit of time before we're before I'm needed, or I mean, because I'll take my drink. I'll just keep keep continuing around, uh, doing my rounds. All right. Uh, the the uh, mysterious force fields have finally abated, and you're fi able to continue to move around. Ha! So. I win this time, Force Fields. <laughs> uh. <sighs> okay. Uh, there's a little bit of... On the bridge, there is a little bit of back patting as almost right on cue. Uh, Director Chalmers re-enters the bridge. As soon as I pull up my right screen and get us back onto the bridge. <clears throat> and Director Chalmers once again appears on the bridge. No, wrong layer. Right layer. Uh, he makes a quick... Um, he points at the captain, points at himself, and then quickly gestures to the ready room. Well, I'll get up from my chair and uh, walk on over. Mm -hmm. And I just, before I walk into the ready room, I just look back to the rest of the bridge. It's just like, continue your day. This won't take long. Okay. Into the captain's ready room. there captain um as soon as the doors close behind him uh director chalmers let's recenter this for stream i apologize director chalmers quickly la uh takes a quick sit on the couch captain i'm sorry to do this to you during your shakedown cruise but a situation has come up and we need you are the best you're the ship closest and best able to take care of it I never anticipate these things to necessarily go as smoothly as you want the line. Uh, he passes over uh, a data pad that shows uh, the pol political borders where you are versus where the Breen are. Mm -hmm. And you notice, probably not for the first time, how close to their sector you actually are. Captain, There has been, uh, we've been in touch with some intelligence through Romulus that... The Breen have recently undergone a massive political shift in their upper hierarchies. And as what happens with such things, many of these prisoners are, or many, let's say they don't survive long in prison, those that survive such oustings. We've received a report that several of these political prisoners are being transferred a being transferred along this part of the border and for whatever reason their cruiser escorts have not made the rendezvous point 
he sort of winks a little bit. I see. Captain, I'm ass. I you obviously don't report to me officially. I'm not actually sure who you report to. I should probably figure that out. But <laughs> Captain, I would appreciate it if you could cross into Breen just a couple parsecs into Breen space, find this transport, disable it, and beam whoever might be in their prisons into our custody, because I am certain that they would prefer Federation Asylum over what might be waiting for them. Well, I certainly understand the delicate nature of this request, but how can we necessarily be sure that this information is accurate? Also, it's coming rather, it's rather coming rather soon. It is. I've been, I got this information beamed directly to me about mm, an hour ago. If we don't act now, the uh, this uh, we will lose this advantage, and these people, these uh, prisoners, will face whatever fate. Oh, fate! Bullet, bring political prisoners face in their gulags. Are any of these prisoners Federation citizens? Not to our knowledge. <sighs> looking at this. Uh looking at this map and considering the capabilities of the ship you're right the window is rather narrow also this is a new ship well i do have full confidence in the crew you're asking me you're asking a lot how are we, are we sure that this uh this is worth it uh he just sort of looks her over his shoulder looks up and just does a bit of a stage whisper well no Captain, the situation between the Federation and the Typhon Pact is... It might be cold right now, but don't be fooled by this peacetime. There are, at any one point, any sort of operations and counter-operations being sent into each other's territories. And if these... This is a risk, but if it's a risk that could get us any intel on what's going on in Breen uh, Sector Command, this gives us a great uh, this gives us a great leverage, a great in level of intelligence that we can leverage over their uh, fleets. I see. I see. You know, once us obviously assuming that we have the ability to pull this pull this, where will these political prisoners go if they request asylum? Once we uh, ah, once we meet up with the Con Tiki and the Con Tiki takes you to the Lasai Expanse, they will be transferred into Starfleet Intelligence Care for debriefing and asylum. Once they are, de once they're fully debriefed, they will uh, be given a cho They will be given multiple choices, but the choice will be theirs. We don't treat we we don't treat asylum seekers with uh, white gloves, as some cultures might put it. They are members of the Federation and, are, and would be free to make their own choices. I see. So, the asylum sequence will definitely have Federation protection. Of course. But, on this, on your station, holograms do not. That is correct. And, and so that's actually a, uh, that's a contentious thing that I do want to kind of bring up with them. Not to deviate too much, but it's mostly a challenge. <laughs> now, out of character, um, has your captain been... Is this his first assignment with Starfleet Intelligence? Or has he been within the group before? He's been within the group before, but this is his first real assignment. Gotcha. So. Captain, ever since, the section, ever since the Section 31 organization was found to be uh, an advanced artificial intelligence named Control about 20 years ago. Um, Starfleet Intelligence has been under a very tight... Um, has been under a microscope by the Federation Council, especially once, they've res once they rescinded Article 14, Section 31. And to be honest, Starfleet, in uh, Starfleet Intelligence right now does not trust artificial intelligences of any nature to grow at this point now need raise a couple hands now i've got nothing against them they're good people i've even met the doctor once shook his hand at one of the parties nice man 
Though he did talk a lot about bacterial walls, I don't know. But, look, as much as I wish I could grant them full rights under Federation Charter, not my call. But these... I'm not... Yeah. At that point, I'm going to cut him off. I'm going to say, well, my fault. Director, I'm not necessarily here to debate the ethics of morality, and most definitely that could be taken at another time. I'm just saying that I hope that these political prisoners will be treated better aboard my ship and aboard uh, whoever I'm handing these people off to, considering the knowledge that I necessarily have of the limited time that I spent aboard Zero Station. But in any case, at that point, I consider the conversation closed. We'll be done. Understood. And he'll, without waiting to be dismissed, he will just walk out of the room. Well, I'll stay in my ready room for a little while. I'll look over this data pad for another minute or two and tap my comm badge and say, Helm, prepare to set course for these coordinates. Tapping the data pad, uh, making sure that you get these coordinates. And uh, then I'm also going to send a message to the tactical station and say, it's time to uh, engage the uh, ca camouflage and counter warfare systems. Roger that, sir. Okay. Sir, these coordinates take us into Breen space. I'm aware of that. Hi, Captain. <laughs> okay, so we are roughly at the halfway mark. This is going to be a shorter session than what I'm aiming for, but that is perfectly fine. So let's take a 10-minute uh, break, folks. I will mute the stream, and we will uh, resume in about 25 past the hour. Um, let me figure out how to actually mute the stream now, now that I've said it.
Okay, folks, welcome back. Uh, okay, you. Folks, welcome back. Uh, that would be my Discord un unmuted. There we go. Okay. So, the captain has just ordered folks to go into warp and engage the cloaking system, or not the cloaking system, the active camouflage systems. So, active camouflage systems, for those watching stream, are something I've cooked up. They work similarly to the Klingon cloaking system mechanically, but they are somehow, through various techno, techno jargon and legalese, legal in the Federation, sort of, kind of-ish, don't use them around the Romulans. So, yeah, activating this system requires a control plus engineering task that as well as, and the ship can assist with a computer's security. So this has a difficulty of three. <clears throat> yeah, and this might be a good yeah, one for Randy, my engineering is a two. Mm -hmm. Plenty of momentum. Yeah, you got plenty of momentum. Yep. If you'd like Rani to run that, then someone can roll for Rani. I could go ahead and roll for Rani if somebody else wants to take care of the ship. I'll grab the ship. And Rani's roll is that control engineering, you say? Uh, control engineering, yes. Difficulty? A difficulty three. Okay. So that is a grand total of five successes. Uh, you have one complication. So uh, you currently have two floating momentum. You can add one to the pool if you'd like, but you have to do something with the other one, otherwise it gets lost. Uh, any information we want to get? Get rid of the complication. Yes, no, no obviously true. we got to get rid of the complication with it. Okay. So. Yeah, agree. Okay, so the complication is poof gone, and you currently have one extra momentum. So grand total of six you're at. So I'm going to... So because you just did so well, I will drag you all into here. So... Oh. So... Mm. Okay, so at the... Um, extreme edge of sensor range, and probably, sorry, I'm just, uh, allow me to recenter this for folks on the stream. Okay, and these are not showing their nameplates, my apologies. Save that. So, out of character question. Yes. Um, engaging this system, would this necessarily have to bring us to red alert? Or um, is this its own special type of alert, or will I have to inform the crew? I, you know, as despite what people think may think about Discovery, I think Black Alert is a fitting. is fitting for this instance. Right. You're just not you're just not going to transport halfway across the galaxy over some mushroom spore stuff. Spore drive. Yeah. Okay. So then... let, let's just say Black Alert because that sounds okay. cool. Well, in that case, I'll uh, definitely uh, tap my uh, console and do an all hands message. Mm -hmm. uh, so, this is the captain to all hands. This is not a drill. We're about to be engaging in a tactical situation. We'll be going to black alert. Please man your stations and be at the ready. I book it back to you, engineering. All right. Um, now, main question for you, Shras um, Are you taking the drink with you? Uh, well, I have nowhere to dump it, right? So, <laughs> there's probably recycler. You know, the okay. other function I'll... of replicators is matter recycling, so you can always just leave it in there, there, and it'll disappear. Or... All right, I'll quickly just, yeah, I'll, I'll just chuck it, chuck it in while I'm running past. All right. It's slightly unprofessional shove of a drink at the during a black alert. <laughs> probably, probably just a little bit. Okay, so. Uh, let's see. So we have one, two, three, four, five. I think that's accurate. So now, as you can tell, we are probably gearing up for a fight here. However, that's up to you guys. Um, 
admittedly, this will be my first combat I've GM'd, so there may be a few rules that I might not have a firm grasp of, and if you guys happen to know something I've forgotten or overlooked, please let me know, and we'll learn through this together. <clears throat> um, so they are currently not, they don't notice you at the moment. Uh, you see two uh, transport frigates, uh, A and B, as well as a series of fighter, as well as a uh, swarm of fighters that are moving in a tight V-style formation. Uh, they are not moving. They're at station keeping for the moment. Uh, but you are picking up the um, broadcast over enc encrypted channels. Then, um, before I go order to try to decrypt this, I also want to um, inform sickbay and tr to prepare for potential casualties and uh, inform transporter, the transporter room to stand by. Very well. Uh, sickbay acknowledges, and so does the transporter room. In that case, um, well, we need to try to figure out what, what they're saying. So that's up to uh, science. So can we try to get, get this uh, message decoded? Okay. Absolutely. Okay, so this is going to be... Uh, let's see. So um, I'm trying to figure out if this would be an engineering or a science task. Um, feel free to make arguments for either way. Um, for one, I would think it would be part of my scanning because I'm picking up the frequency. Not to mention I do have linguistics. Okay. That's perfectly fair. Okay. So that would be a insight Ah, insight science for you. Um, um, I have cryptography. Can I assist? Uh, yes. Oh, hang on. I've actually just found the rules for communications. Uh, intercept. So pick up and decipher transmissions of others. Uh, this is an insight engineering task. Sorry. Oh, no problem. Yep. Can I assist? <laughs> uh, which? Who's asking? I'm sorry. Bashir. Uh, Bashir? Yes. Okay, so... You guys, you right. two are more than welcome to assist, but the sh if you a ship, yeah, if you assist, then the ship does not. So only one person can assist here. I'll back so who's, doing doing free low. Okay. who's doing the main check? Am I doing the main check? Um, I believe that would either, I believe that would be Bashir if he's the one being ordered to do it. Okay, so can I assist then? Um, or should the ship do it? Engineering. If it's, if it's an engineering check, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, okay. I mean, I have a comms yeah. officer, so it's probably best for the engineer to do it. Sure. I I, I myself actually forgot, so. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, do we want the ship who's been rolling awesome, or do you want me to do backup with you from the uh, scanning room? I think the engineer should uh, take the lead here, and yeah. you can do back. So engineer okay. can do it and then Bashir will assist cool right. um, I'm going to set the difficulty of three because this is Breen in actually I'm going to set, set the difficulty to four because this is Breen encryptions uh hmm now you do have I six suppose, momentum, so I suppose cultural studies doesn't help this does it not really no right. um if you have like decryption linguistics would probably work nope okay this will be an interesting check then Okay, um, so I guess I can. If you so want. I guess I'll buy I'll buy two dice. Okay, so that's a grand total of three momentum. Yeah, because we had six, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. Um, so that's four. I'll have four dice. Should I buy one with a threat? Um, I have bold and I, I have bold at the bold talent. Oh, so that um, you cannot spend both momentum and threat on a single. Oh, level. okay. So okay, if you wish to, you know, give me. Uh, let's see. So it is one threat for one dice, and then I believe the second dice is two threat. So if you want to give me three threat, then I might as well use momentum then. Okay, so you're yes. using yeah, momentum. momentum. Okay, I'll spend two uh, two momentums. I mean, sorry, th three momentum for two dice. Okay. Is it insight plus engineering, right? Yeah, insight engineering. All right. <clears throat> uh, four dice. Okay, no focus. Wow, you made yes. it. Nice. Wow. So nice. that's four success, or that's four successes. Let's see if uh, Bashir can get you one X uh, momentum. Okay. So I'm doing insight science or engineering for uh, insight engineering, please. Okay.
Well, that's... Uh, you only roll one dice for an assist, but that's still oh, one success. That's okay. That's still one success, so you're back to four momentum. Nice. So what you're picking up, um, you're you're generating... Um, ah, sorry. Uh, the brain are generating two sets of signals. One is a... One are pretty much um, positioning orders for their fighters, keeping them on a fairly tight leash around them. Uh, the other is somewhere heading back into Breen's sector, um, inf being, ah, informing them that their escorts have not shown up. Uh, being this close to Federation space was not the brightest idea in the world. Uh, can we please confirm and update orders? Uh, so I'll let the captain know. Find out. Mm -hmm. Well, at that point, um, the ship does have counter warfare systems, right? It so does maybe time to finally put them into place okay i don't necessarily i'm gonna float this option to the crew um thinking of all so i'm all open to suggestions people but in general or there are political prisoners on board one of these transport ships but at this point i don't want to assume anything they may possibly be on the fighters themselves although it's unlikely and we need to get them out Obviously, we need to get transporter room at the ready, but I'm thinking that our best course of action is most likely to try to trick the Breen. I don't want to provoke a conflict. So, options. Thinking about using the counter-warfare systems of the ship to fake a transmission and also trying to get them to reveal which ship has which prisoners. I might be able to assist in the finding out which, which ship, ship or ships uh, have prisoners with the, uh, the Starship Expert talent. To, to identify like different flight patterns if they're being more defensive around one more more one than the other okay that's, or, or what that's, have a, you. that's a good idea all right uh, let's see oh, i didn't put in all the things you can't do with active camouflage eh, worry about that later anyways um so if you want to uh keep an eye on things for their uh flight patterns that would be Insight plus con, difficulty of two. Insight plus con, difficulty of two. Uh, and I've, I'll, I'll apply the small craft focus to it to study the, the fighters. Ah, a, a wise idea. Okay. All right. Insight plus con. <clears throat> uh, let me just pull up the talent. I had it open. Starship expert. Uh, when I succeeded a contact to identify a type of starship or to try to understand, uh, I gain a momentum. Ah. Or we gain a momentum, which may only be used to obtain information. Okay. But I haven't succeeded yet, so here goes nothing. I'd call that a success. That is two successes. Okay, so you gain one momentum, so I will tell you things, and if you have any another question you want to ask after I give you the information, you can give me that momentum that okay. you just gained. Uh, so there are a grand total of eight Breen fighters flying in a fairly tight formation. Uh, judging from their slight imprecision of movement, these are probably not drones. And you do see that they are focusing more heavily on the Breen Transport B. Uh, do... Um, so I would like to spend the momentum back to you to ask a question. Sure. Are the, Is Breen Transport B... Any more armed or shielded, based on the scans, than Breen Transport A? Like, does it look yeah. like it's subtly concealing weapons, that sort of thing? On the exterior, both of them appear to be as armed and armored as the other one. Uh, however, what sensors or what the sensors are able to tell you um, are is that Breen Transport B has more. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, more spacious interior layout rather than, you know, military quarters and uh, the like. <clears throat> uh, I'll relay all that back to the captain. Captain, I think it's my personal opinion that they are on Breen Transport B. And give them the whole reason behind it. Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, at that point, uh, the Breen Confederacy hasn't radioed back in yet, right? Uh, they have not been. They have not yet received a reply. All right. In that case, I do want us to stand ready to intercept, if possible, before we relay it back to uh, these brain ships. Okay. And so, 
Um, I'm just going to quickly do some checks from the Breen to see how well their, if their sensors are doing anything to detect you guys around. Let's see. Oh, wow, he rolled well. That would be a critical. Okay. Let's see. So, scan for weakness. So, what you're seeing here are basically um, macros I'm, I've, well, I'd like to say I made them up, but I didn't. I got them from the continuing mission site. Um, basically, these are most common roles that enemy ships will do. So, they're all just in one macro, so you can ignore most of them. Most of the numbers that are spat out here. It's like photon torpedoes. No, not yet. <laughs> shields! Polar on array. What? Yeah, at least they're not regenerating shields. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, that was a critical success on one of the Breen transports. Cool. Okay. So, you are standing ready to go to intercept. Uh, you're on the lookout for a return communication from Breen Sector Command when all of a sudden um, Irkin and, Lu and Liam notice a sudden shift in their um, tactical formation. They b um, Both fr transports move up close to one another and the Breen fighters begin a f sort of a figure eight style patrol around both of them. Captain, I think we've been spotted. But they're not making any motion beyond that at the moment. Well, I still haven't necessarily... They may have spotted us, we may not. I still don't necessarily want to engage. So at that point, I'd like to put us in a flight path that's parallel to them. Make them think that we're a sensor. Ah, sensor ghost. Okay, this will be a daring plus con check for um, Erkin. Yes, sir. A difficulty of two, and the ship can assist with engines plus con. All right, plus got the con. ship. Okay. Uh, I can spend... I can get an additional dice for one threat, because I'm bold. Okay, so... But I don't think I need to... Hmm. Um, if you're bold, it just lets you re -roll. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. So if you're if you're bold, by bold, that means um, you you spend threat to grab grab extra dice okay. instead of then you can reroll one. So uh, I think we're good. Yep, you're good. Okay, so you bring the maybe not that close, but feel free to maneuver yourself <laughs> uh, wherever you wish. No. <laughs> Sorry, I can I can punch them from here. Throttles are a bit sticky. <laughs> we engage warp ten. We're everywhere simultaneously. No bad Voyager. Spore drive. Spore drive. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to go on a discovery rant right now. Okay. <laughs> so uh, you have a ch um, you've uh, moved, and the Breen have begun. Uh, f more sensor sweeps of the area, but for the moment you seem okay, and your uh, your electronic counter warfare systems have picked up a response coming back from somewhere with deeper within Breen space. Mm -hmm. uh, this again is going to be decrypting. However, since you successfully decrypt, uh, since you successfully intercepted and decrypted the first one, I'll drop the difficulty down to a three. So then insight engineering to and if the ship wishes to assist and because you're trying to use the counter warfare systems, I'll insist that the ship assist. So insight engineering with someone and the ship can assist with communications plus security. Okay, I suppose I'll do that then. Okay. Um, do you guys want me to use just one of the momentum or should I use three? Uh, go ahead I'm and use one. Yeah, yeah, I want to save this. Okay, so I'll just I'll, get, I'll roll three dice then. Okay. Uh, All right, I got the ship ready for you. All right, spending uh, momentum. I got three successes. Three successes, fantastic! And the ship once again gets no successes, but it doesn't have the best security score yet either. So, 
Okay. Uh, Shras's fingers work all over it, all over the consoles, as he, and uh, within mere minutes, the communication is translated. Uh, you get, not only do you get the orders for the transports, but you also get the command authorization codes. Sorry, uh, the auth the command codes uh, or the com I'm sorry, my mouth is getting ahead of me. Uh, the communication orders the whole transport fleet to uh, change course and head immediately to a planet called Dipox Two at maximum warp. Uh, their escorts have been delayed, and this close to Federation space is not a good place to await them. I see. During this uh, time, before I call out another order, I'm still, you know, waiting. If the crew wants to speak up with any other responses or suggestions, you know, I'm open to them. But at that point, and you know, if no, if nothing else, um, since it is our uh, the opinion of our officers that transport be most likely. Ha prisoners on there. I would like to be able to see if I could sense anything with my empathic abilities. Maybe okay. I could sense distress or okay. a concern. Now, I was meaning to look up the, how to do this with Beta Zeds, and admittedly I have not. So, are there rules somewhere for telepathy or empathy within Star Trek Adventures? Or may I? Because if not, I'm going to make it a presence plus command. I think it's a presence role, yeah. uh, but I'm exactly unsure if it works differently in combat or like a chivalry tactical scenario. Yeah, well, we're sort of in pseudo combat at the moment. No one's actually <laughs> making any attack rolls, so I'm not. We're not in initiative at the moment, so. Okay then. Yeah. So let's say that this is a presence plus command test, um, and because. I highly doubt you have experience with Breen before. I'm going to set the difficulty to be a three. Okay, then. Uh, would my, either of my focuses, whether they be investigation or pattern recognition, work here? I would, I would say so, yes. Um, where did the third dice come from? Oh, you said difficulty three. I did, but um, that means you roll two dice, and you have to beat... A th you always roll oh, two dice on a test, unless oh you buy God, a third with momentum. I think, um, uh, I think that's the key thing here. I think it's my sheet. Hold uh, up. I so can re-roll that. That's fine. It's either that, or you just... I'll say that you can spend the momentum retroactively. Uh, I'll go ahead and re-roll it. Okay. Presence command... 2d20, and we'll do the token. Sorry about that. That's okay. Ow. And you get <laughs> oh, and now you get four successes. <laughs> Take that. Take that, GM. Okay, yeah. so that is one momentum. I sense everything. <laughs> uh, you're now at four momentum. Okay, so uh, from transport B, you're getting a lot of distressed thoughts. Um, a lot of uncertainty, and not and not a lot of disciplined minds that would be coming from the Breen fighters or the Breen transports. Um, mm -hmm. Transport A is generating a little bit of confusion at the moment, but mostly duty, honor, you know, typical soldier mantra stuff. All right then. Well, I turn to the crew. I'm just going to be well, I sense distress and confusion. So I feel like your analysis is probably right on point. Now the question is, how do we get these people off this ship? Is it all the people on the ship we have to get, or a select few? A select few. How do we identify them? Well, does our, does our sensor operator have any ideas? Um, I mean... Target all non-breen life forms. Uh, mm, the uh, uh, Vault yeah. Rani perks up, um, sir. If I may, perhaps if we get a clear scan of the interior structure of the transport, 
will be able to figure out where their prisons are or where they're um where they're keeping them ah, where they're keeping their prisoners based on concentration of life signs that is a uh, an excellent idea by, by all means to take care of that but make sure not to be discovered make make a discreet scan okay i can pull up whatever whatever i found because you said that it was sort of more cavernous yeah so i can pull up that okay so based on the success of your earlier scan um because you're now scanning for something different uh this would be a uh, sensors plus engineering test with a difficulty it would have been difficulty three but because of Urkin's earlier success i'll be nice and lower the difficulty to two however i will spend some threat and increase the complication range from to 18 to 20. Did you say sensors plus engineering? Uh, yes, it's sensors engineering. Oh, sensor yeah. For the ship? For the so yeah. the ship's rolling? Ship ship and is. Then... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Insight engineering for whoever's doing the primary scan, and okay. then the ship can assist with a uh, sensors plus engineering. Okay. Yeah. So then again, I'll I'll spend one momentum to take it one extra, uh, one extra. Uh, and I'll okay. do insight plus engineering. Do this again. Okay. And if someone could please roll for the ship. Got the ship. Awesome. While you while you're uh. scanning. <laughs> That's not so good. That's not terrible. Let's see. Okay. Um. The so the good news is you guys serve. You guys do. Uh. The the test is successful. The bad news is that those two zeros are complications. That uh, is the bad news. That is the bad yes. news. Oh, yeah. Well. Yep, they uh, are. We still have some you could dump two momentum to cancel them out. Yeah, I still want to play this a little bit slow, so if there's no other objections. We might as well. Yeah, we might as well see what happens. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Those two. That's not going to discover it. Or... Dumping, object uh, dumping momentum. And now you guys see why I gave you so many easier rolls during the quote-unquote shakedown. Mm-hmm. Okay. Let's just recenter the... Yeah. But on the right side, we now, we now know the layout. Mm -hmm. So you, are, you now have a very thorough layout um, down to the... Um, <clears throat> oh, I should also say, uh, remind you that because you succeeded on a sensor's task, you gained one momentum. Thank you. Oh. Thanks to the um, advanced sensors that you have. Yeah. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Thanks. Yep. Um, you are able to uh, gain uh, a pretty good layout of the transport's uh, interior. The and are, it's fairly straightforward to figure out where the prisoners are. Uh, they appear to be on one of the lower decks, um, near the aft sections of the ship. Uh, there appear to be 15 life signs that are all sort of clustered together not moving at all whereas the rest of the life signs while they may not be you know moving about the ship willy nilly you definitely can see that they are they have more freedom of movement than these 15 I see. how many of those 15 are brain um it is um it's actually uh if you spend the mo a momentum that you just got i will tell you uh, just sure. to separate sure. them, yeah, I'm separate because them. Mm -hmm. the Breen are like a collective of alien races. So, yes, do they all scan as like Breen, or is it like is it like the Zindi where they're all like have a genetic code, or is the Breen like all just like a collation? Well, let me let me rephrase that uh, question. I mostly want to see find out you know how many are Breen slash if they're being guarded like within whatever area of the ships there are at. Understood. Okay. So, um, a little bit of exposition. Um, well, the Breen were at one point thought to be a monogamous or a, a mon monogamous race. So, all, with, within their suits, they were just the same that they wore them because their homeworld was a cold place to live and they needed it to survive the harshness of the rest of the world, the rest of the galaxy. Um, it wasn't until the Dominion War happened that um, the Breen were revealed to actually be a confederacy of multiple races, all under the same um, political banner. 
and the per the reason the suits were worn are they are the ultimate defense against nepotism and favoritism. So anyone that does well and and uh, it's a meritocracy basically, uh, where a person can succeed with without being judged on race or gender or any other differences that may appear. Um, so because of this, um, the Breen in their suits generate a sim a very uh, a very plain and Breen life sign. They'll just show up on most sensors as Breen. No matter how advanced the sensor technology is, nothing's been able to, nothing has been found to pierce it. Okay. Um, back to your question: uh, of the fifteen that are more or less not moving, five are registering as Breen, and ten are registering as various life sci various life forms. One or two of which your computer pings as known races of the Breen Confederacy, but most of them are still unknown. All right, then. But in general, there are. It is a distinct separation of people Correct. within that uh, cavern. Correct. Okay. Okay, so that sounds doable. Oh, hopefully, let's not jinx it. Uh, <laughs> I still need to be able to determine that. Hopefully, everybody. It's unlikely that everybody is just going to be on this on this one ship, and if we start transport, and if we have the ability to transport. After you know, possibly they drop their shields. Right? We still need to make sure we get everybody as much as we can. That's a good question, Captain. Are the shields up? They have raised shields, yes. Okay. And it's about this time that they're going to do another sensor scan. You have active camouflage in place. Uh, let's see the. Green fighters aren't doing so well, actually. Uh, whoops, others, uh, let's see. They rolled... Nope, that's still not enough to detect you. Uh, the Breen fighters are reporting that they are low on fuel and must re, uh, redock and regain their fuel for their next patrol. Oh. So for the moment, because I rolled a complication for them, this is what they're going to do. Okay, so they're going to be docking with the transports? They are. They have docked with transport A. Okay, so small opportunity there. Mm -hmm. um, now... The the, begins to smile. Um, so the intercept task that you've done has prevented the communication from getting forward, or getting forwarded on. Do you wish to uh, still do anything with that particular thread? I do. Um, I'd like to attempt to use the command authorization codes we got to somehow convince them to do a quick systems check, recheck their uh, their flight pattern, and uh, okay. something along the lines of, you know, uh, to trick them. Maybe something along the lines of, uh, hold on, let me just get my words out. Mm -hmm. Because of because of the uh, change in program and flight pattern, um, and because of other unknown variables and being this close to the Federation border, we'd like you to do a quick diagnostic to be able to make sure that everything is in order along while you are refueling. So getting them to drop their shields, right. seeing if we could uh, and seeing if we could use that window of opportunity to transport along with sending the command code. Okay, uh, let's see. So that would be... Hmm. That's a good one. So let's say that is going... Well, it was that to it was insight engineering to decrypt, so I'm going to say that it would be control plus engineering to encrypt. Um, and the the ship can assist with communication security, and this will be set at difficulty two. Okay. Um, do you want me to do the encryption, or my controls okay? Uh, yeah, what's, what's your controller? My controls, I control eight, um, engineering five. Okay. Can I convince the GM to make this a uh, command task? Ah, uh, so you want to, okay. Security task. Because at the same time, I mean, it is, um, you know, a tactical communique. Okay. Um, 
Sure, why not? So that would be insight plus command, but the ship will still assist with communication security. Okay, then. So if nobody has any objections, I'll personally roll for that. Insight nope. plus command. Go yep. for it. Go ahead. All Keep yours. I, I got also, the ship. Okay. Me, I also have a focus for, uh, you know, I'd say undercover operations. So this is most definitely yep. espionage esque. This is definitely espionage esque. That's the two you need, then the ship doesn't give you any, I'm afraid. Yeah, you probably should look into upgrading its security that's, at some point. Yeah, that's struck out three times now. Hmm. <laughs> uh, either way, uh, you make you make the uh, you uh, make the communication as and send it on its way. Uh, it's a very tense few minutes while you wait for uh, while you watch the Breen ships. Uh, finally, there it does appear that they are beginning to cycle through their systems as they bring them up to full power, then drop them down to no power, then bring them back to nominal as necessary. Mm -hmm. Well, at that pace, has that window been open that they've been able to cycle so we could use that to transport? Yep, you can certainly do so. Well, I'll go and tell our engineers and transporter chief to Stand by and bream out those prisoners. Okay. Uh, aye, aye. You do May have I suggest a... a security duty, too? Oh, of course. Obviously. Okay. Yeah. So, you do have a security chief. I, or, not a security chief. Well, we have one of those already. Uh, I made a support character for the transporter chief. Uh, her name is Avon Zell. Uh, so, if someone okay. wants to roll for her... I grabbed her. Okay. Um, so, this... I've always found transporter tasks to be oddly difficult, considering how routine they've done in Star Trek, but at the same time, it is what it is. Uh, so, to beam from a non-transporter pad uh, is uh, one extra... Uh, a base difficulty for a transporter test is control plus engineering. Uh, difficulty two. Uh, however, because the target is not on a pad, on a transporter pad, the difficulty is increased by one. Um, okay. Additionally, you're beaming aboard a lot of people, so I'm going to increase the difficulty again. Uh, so this is now a difficulty of four task. Oh, uh, to be clear, yes. before, um, before at least this takes place, obviously we're sending a, uh, just to reconfirm, we're sending a security detachment, obviously, to meet them mm -hmm. in the transporter room and to set possibly any injured to sick there. Mm -hmm. Let's head to the transporter room then. Okay, attempting to beam them aboard, Captain. Uh, I will use the my targeting scanner's focus. Okay. To try to get them all. Uh, control plus engineering. Two D twenty. Well, the ship. Uh, hmm? uh, the, ship ca the ship will assist with uh, sensors plus engineering. Uh, I feel we should spend the momentum on this. Um, oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, that's... Uh, you need to roll one extra dice there, Avon. Yep, sorry. That's all right. Now, this is also a good point, um, because the task is so difficult that I should bring up determination. Um, actually, Chief Zell being a support character doesn't have a value yet to... Peg for determination. Um, so never mind. Um, if a crew member who has determination can spend the role, can do the primary role, then it could be spent to do um, things like give you an automatic two successes to a role. <clears throat> well, I... Four. I'm back, baby. Wow. Okay. <laughs> right. The uh, USS Nighthawk comes back with a vengeance. So we just know that we know that our tactical officer can't use any tactical skills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but engineering, he's got down pat. Okay. Uh, so. Only when I play the show. Yeah. Uh, let me just put <clears throat> people on here. I did not actually come up with tokens for the prisoners because I am a bad GM. I am sorry. But let's just pretend that there is a huddled mass of confused bodies. 
um, the captain and the security guard. Why are you all coming in on this layer? Captain, chief of security, and I'm going to assume a couple other armed individuals. Stride in just as Chief Zell wipes the sweat from her blue brow, and a mass of people collapse on the transporter pad. Well, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, so, uh, Chief Zell does not attempt to hide her satisfaction in herself. <laughs> yes. Got him. So they collapsed on the transporter pad? Yes, uh, most of them do not look in good shape. Um, even though you are not uh, medically trained, you do see signs of malnourishment, uh, dehydration, and many have been on the receiving end of various bludgeoning instruments. Mm -hmm. um, one of them just sort of weakly looks up and says, Who are you? Well, in that case, don't be alarmed. Right now you're on board a Federation starship. And I promise you will be treated with care. But we are in a quick situation, and I need to know, is there anybody, are there any other prisoners on board that second transport ship? The first, uh, the person that spoke uh, shakily stands to his feet, uh, does a quick head count. No, no, this is the what's left of the former council. Council? Yes, we were the um, uh, we were the military council of the of the Breen Confederacy until Thought Grace took over rather violently. He I see. Pulls. Um, he stands up and tries to straighten his orange jumpsuit. Uh, How long ago did this take place? And while I'm asking these questions, I'm looking at you know the security officers, and I'm also expecting the medical teams to get here to get these people. Yep. Um, that. Yep. Uh, the doctor and the the doctor, the nurse, um, quickly rush in and begin scanning. Uh, they sort of guide the more wounded off the pad and sort of begin doing a bit of triage on them. Uh, Captain, I am thought, or I am Irna, no, I suppose military brain titles are no longer a thing for us. We've been, uh, what's the best word in common? We've been exposed is the best way. Um, removed of our anonymity. We have no place in Breen society anymore. You may call me Alras. And I was the the head of the Breen Military Council. Well, Alras, it's a pleasure to meet you. Although I wish it was obviously under better circumstances. At this time, I am, you know, I am obliged to inform you that you have the ability to seek asylum. And if you do so, I will grant you most assuredly, and with it comes the protections of the Federation. I promise you no harm will come to you under my care. Captain, I and be, I, on behalf of myself and these others who I speak for, request asylum within the Federation. In that case, granted. Um, on the bridge, um, I'm not sure who's left in command. I think that would be Erkin is currently the senior officer on the bridge. Uh, Erkin, oh. the second that these folks have materialized <laughs> on the Crap. bridge, um, the Breen Shields snap to full, uh, their weapon systems charge, and they begin scanning the bejesus out of this sector. Uh, tap the comm badge. Uh, Captain? Uh, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming our friends of note are trying to figure us back us out of here s s quietly. But back out, back off as quickly as you can. Still don't want to get noticed. Well, we can go to we can go to work with the active camouflage on. Oh, yeah. by all means, I need to <laughs> I need to brush up on my tech stacks. Let's go to warp immediately. Okay, um, going to warp under camouflage does increase the difficulty by one. Um, yeah, especially when we're trying it too. Yes. Uh, let's see. So that would be a daring plus con of I believe. Um, I don't actually remember what the original thing is under combat. So let's just let's just call it a straight difficulty two. 
Nah, I'm, I'll spend whatever threat I have and raise the difficulty by one. Um, difficulty is now three. Okay. And the ship can assist with uh, engines plus con. And we're taking that. that last momentum. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, yeah, smells definitely. Um, we'll go back we're to not the coming back. Go back to the bridge, because yeah. that's where the fun is. Uh, so I'll set the um, coordinates back to where we started from. No! Okay. Oh, no. Oh, no. So that is... And you've already... Hang on. Something's not right here. Wait, so... I haven't, I haven't rolled yet. Oh, nope. That's yeah, why. I, you yeah. just rolled the... And Andrew took... Right. Or, um, Erkin took the last momentum, didn't he? Yep. Okay. Yep. You'd better roll well here. Oh, don't have no fear. <laughs> have no fear. Uh, during... Um, 3d20. Go. Well, uh, focus is helm operations, clearly. Obviously, yep. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, shoot. Hang on. Uh, determination? Yeah, now would be a good time to spend that determination yes. so that you can... Yeah. The only time you can re-roll zeros during this sort of roll is by spending your determination. Sounds like a good plan to me. Okay, so re-roll those zeros. Uh, so I got two. Oh, I see what I've done. Con 2d20 rolling. Focus is a yes. And we're off. Ta -da! Oh, nice. Yes. There you go. Okay, so you gain... Uh, you still have the complication, but at least you get the success. Yep. Um, so, as you are... As you spin up into warp, you engage warp, and the active camouflage is not fully calibrated to um, make to enter warp at high speeds. So they do know that the Federation have been involved, and they know your general heading, but that's about it. Well, in that case, we're already off to Federation space. And I assume they're probably not going to... They don't have the ability to intercept us from what we could tell, at least not one. Probably not. So, you know, unfortunate, but I'll take it. Yep. Fair enough. Um... Okay. Oh, hello, Director Chalmers. Yes, uh, during the... <laughs> Skinner! <laughs> Finally, someone made the joke. Yes. I know, I've been waiting for it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Here, right. would you want some uh, steam, steamed hams to calm you down? <laughs> now, now, don't spoil the director's uh, mess hall surprise. <laughs> Anyways. Okay, so... And you've actually did that without beating... You know, engaging in a firefight, which is quite impressive, I must say. We could have taken them. Yeah, uh, yeah. Damn, damn right. Just, just beat me on board, and I'll, I'll start hitting them with my ice pick. Starfleet intelligence ships, by the way. Yep. We try to be on sand. Precisely. I'd say that's the whole point. <laughs> okay, uh, Director Chalmers um, just basically gives a couple brief uh, claps and a prod, ah, in applaud and approval. And then says, right, um, carry on, I guess. I don't know. You do you. I got to go see these rescued folks. And he's I, inspiring, inspiring yes. guy, that one. <laughs> Wonder if that's the before, Hold on. Before, if that's the case, director, I'd like you to be accompanied by uh, my security and tactical slash tactical officer at that point. In my mind, I am, you know, with that earlier bigotry. I don't want to leave him alone with these people to debrief them. Very well. So. Okay. Uh, so let's say that on his en route to sick bay. Oh, of course, he goes and sits in the command chair or the. <laughs> just, to, just to try it out. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, sorry. Captain, this is a uh, captain. This is uh, Liam. Go ahead. The. Uh... The asylum seekers. Um, rec recommend we set up something in one of the cargo bays, not 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 as a prison cell, but to secure them because we can't let them roam around unescorted around the ship. I understand and I agree. Use any resources that you feel like are, are available. To Roger, I'll get a team working, and I call up some of the uh, the lower ratings to start getting a. A room set up. Also, before uh, we enter transmission, I just want to tell him. By the way, 
um, at this point, I assume, uh, before I say this, uh, Chalmers has entered the turbo lift. Mm -hmm. And I just keep an eye on Director Chalmers. Make sure he doesn't do anything you and I wouldn't do. Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay, so, Captain, where are you going to be? Um, those that are deemed a, just a little malnourished are offer are escorted to the let's just call it the rehabilitation center that's being sent a, set up uh, given some food water and as much uh, real as much as they need to feel comfortable uh, however three uh, let's say four of the individuals are wounded enough to require sick bay attention so they've four of them have been brought into the sick, sick bay area uh, where would the captain like to be Chalmers is obviously going to sickbay. Well, I'll accompany him to sickbay along with my security officer. And okay. while I leave the bridge, I'll turn to a Bashir. You have the bridge. I calm him back and I'll head up to the bridge. Yeah. All right. Uh, Bashir, you enter the bridge and find uh, Elker in the uh, second Erkan. officer's ch Elk, sorry. That's what happens when I'm not actually looking at people's tokens on the first session. Oh. And, and as, soon, as soon as he enters, I will move. Like, oh, yeah. I'll go back to my station. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you saw nothing. <laughs> yep, pretty much. Pretty <clears throat> my antenna perk and just kind of glare. Very well. Okay, you enter the, uh, you enter the uh, sick bay. Uh, Chalmers heads out in front and sort of just brushes past the security or brushes past Liam and immediately goes to one of them and goes greetings I am director Chalmers of Starfleet Intelligence and I'm here to oversee your debriefing and asylum into the Federation I just would like to say that it was very uh, I'd like to express regret over what has happened to you and your uh, you and your council but I would uh, and I strive to make your life in the your, your life in the Federation as comfortable as possible. However, please understand that w there will be some formalities as well as a bit of a debrief that you will have to go through before uh, Starfleet, before um, before full asylum can be granted. And the, one of them that, who by the way is not the same one that you were talking to earlier, um, mm -hmm. she looks up, she nods a bit and just says, whatever information I can give you director before um, uh, the ensign literally puts a hand on the director pushes him back a couple steps administers a hypo spray and the patient uh, falls into a medically induced coma at this point I'd like to be able to before she falls into a coma yep. just read the general room and read the the emotions coming off of Chalmers right now okay. and and the uh, person he was speaking with okay um, you've been around them. You've been around Chalmers enough to know to get a basic read on him. Um, despite his gruff exterior, uh, he is sincere in his desire to help these people as best he can. Um, there is, of course, a little bit of self-interest or Federation interest going on, but you. But he does want to see these people, the rest, see that they live the rest of their lives as best they can as Federation citizens. Trust but verify. Yep. Although I I sense that emotion, still still gotta be wary around the man. So. But that's nice. Yep. I won't interfere at this point. Very well. Um, Director Chalmers um, tries to interfere with the doctor, and receives a glare that could crack ice. Um, as she threatens to. Um, do something creative to him with her ductog if he <clears throat> interferes in any more of her business with these people. She says there are several that are well enough to talk down in the car down in Cargo Bay 3. Go see them. At that point, I just say, well, you heard my doctor. Best leave well enough alone. For now. You sense a bit of a put-outness from him. He's not used to being told what to do, but he puts on a bit of a woe woe is me look and then says yes i think that's best in that case then i assume that uh, we're heading down to the rest of these people in the cargo bay mm -hmm. 
Okay, and I actually have a cargo bay map. Put them here. Put some tokens on the map. Cuts. There are a whole bunch of cots set up. All my video camera up in the corner. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I should mention that the Scryer class is a uh, scale 5 ship. So it is not... Or it is a pretty spacious vessel. It's also pretty sparsely crewed at the moment. There's only about 200 crewmen on board, all Starfleet intelligence. So there is a lot of space to put people as needed. Yeah, it's easier to keep control if they're all in one spot. Precisely. <clears throat> uh, um, you come across... You, uh, you come across... Uh, sorry, I, my stutter got the better of me. Uh, you come upon a scene of two security officers with weapons not drawn, but obviously ready to do so, standing at the main door. Uh, there is a small commune, I guess the best way to put it, of cots and <clears throat> cots and medical stations, and one of the nurses just making sure that everyone is okay. Uh, these people are eating a lot of food, and they're drinking a lot of water, and... Uh, the first thing that comes to you, um, Captain, is a sense of relief from them. Well, even though, I mean, that makes me happy. I try not to let it show, but I'm glad to know that I'm able to, that we were able to necessarily do a little bit of good today. But, you know, the mission comes first, so mm -hmm. I still move, I move swiftly through uh, the cargo bay mm -hmm. to be able to meet with anybody that's willing. Uh, you recognize the man that was that first greeted you in the um, Aldras. Uh, he'll stand up. Um, I believe that Federation people express gratitude with a handshake, and he'll stick out what is obviously the wrong hand. Well, in that case, I'll awkwardly match it, you know, with the opposite hand, and I'll be like, you guessed correctly. Captain, um... I can't, I can't thank you enough for saving us. Um, they were, go I heard that they were going to take us to uh, Relson Four, and that is not a world that prisoners ever come back from. Um, if there's anything I can do to be of assistance, well, actually there is. Uh, the director immediately s steps forward. Hi, Director Chalmers, Starfleet Intelligence. There, you have full. Uh, you have my word as director of S Station Zero that the that you and the council will receive full me Federation membership after asylum has been granted. And then he goes into the whole spiel again of asking for the debrief. And again, you're getting a sense that all this is very sincere. And the uh, council members both seem to agree that now that they're no longer in charge, why should their replacements... Um, get away with this if they can mm -hmm. do anything to sabotage or give any information into the breen or their methods then so be it well in that case then i'd like to get started you know by all means while it's still fresh in your mind if you have the ability to speak then please tell us what you know all right they will they will go on from here um oh before um, before that's yes that's I don't know. I don't want to take this away from you. Whether that's going to be next session or you want to do a little bit of RP today. But if that's the case, I want to move them out of the cargo bay, at least a few that are willing that we're going to speak to one on one, and you know, obviously put them in a more secure environment. Of course. There are several uh, quarters that are available. And being a uh, Starfleet intelligence ship, there are certain security and monitoring measures that could be enabled if, the P if deemed so by the captain or security officer. The captain does. Fair enough. Uh, it's not hard to find uh, several quarters. They can be placed uh, single, dual, two to quarter, two to quarters. There's enough space to go around. Um, and as you do so, um, Director Chalmers just sort of, well, would you look at the time, uh, Captain? As much as I hate to be one of those people that look that uh, hold you to orders and whatnot. Uh, we are scheduled to meet the USS Contiki about two hours ago. Oh. 
well you know schedules obviously here in the vastness of space most definitely get a little bit cluttered uh i uh, tap my combat to the bridge uh, i tap my combat and i say captain to the bridge yes captain oh make sure you signal the contiki and tell her to uh prepare for our let's how long will it take us to get there within uh at warp three uh warp three will um quick calculation there uh it would be about uh irk or er, irk can, can figure it out to be about a half day half a day all right well i want to take maybe i want to get there in at least around maybe the next six to eight hours so because uh, i want to debrief these people first before that i hand them over them to, to the contiki so I want to take my time. Very well. Um, I hadn't planned much role playing around here, actually, but it's hey, we can. Fine. Um, so let's roll. Actually, let's do an extended task for this. Um, debriefing and just making sure that the. Um, just making sure that everyone is okay. So an extended task is done as a series of rolls. Um, yeah, t- um, all working towards a hopefully a success. Uh, so there are, I believe, four different values to a roll. Uh, the first is work track, which is the number of uh, successful challenge dice needed to ensure the uh, success. So I'm going to set I'm going to set that at a work track of twelve. Um, let's see. I'm doing this by memory, so let's see if I remember everything. There is a difficulty, uh, which is the, um, which is the minimum number of successes you need to achieve it. Pretty much what we've been rolling against all, all night long. Uh, let's say because everyone is so bloody friendly with you right now and more than willing to spill their guts, I'm going to make that a difficulty of one. Uh, the next is resistance. That means how many. Um, challenge dice are you must surpass to actually make any progress on the work track um i will this will make more sense as as we roll trust me uh i'll say that as a resistance of two and finally we will roll a there is a magnitude i.e the number of um how large the task is and the more the further you get along the work track the less the magnitude gets so basically the number of hurdles Mm -hmm. and i will call that a magnitude of three so i will just quickly put that in chat sir i can assist you i have uh persuasion as a focus as well as interrogation as a talent I have I have cultural studies as its focus. Yeah. Well, at that point, um, since only one person can assist me right now, right at the time, wait, it's a work track, so yep. we can put as many people on that as we like. I so, believe that's the case. Yeah. So, oh, sweet. Um, uh, sure. Director. Um, okay. So, uh, who else was assisting this? Uh, I'd be interested. I'd be interested okay. in hearing about their culture and stuff. If Shras is interested and the captain allows him in, then that's fine by me. Well, yeah, can, captain's prerogative by all. Mm-hmm. But I do want to keep it rather limited, so those are the only two officers that I will bring with me along with Director Chalmers. Okay. And for once, Director Chalmers is going to be quiet. I think he's realized oh that God. he might not be the best person for this job. Okay. Oh, he can stand, stand on lot. Okay, so who is the main... Who's going to take the lead on this? I, I will. Okay. Sure. Um, so that would be a probably a presence plus command task. Mm-hmm. Uh, difficulty of one, of course. So you would roll the two dice, and then those assisting would just roll one dice to assist. Presence plus command. All right, then. So 2d20. Mm-hmm. Um I've got my focus with investigations. Excellent. Oh, well, that's three. That is four successes. Successes. So that is three momentum generated. And now we roll a number. So you all should, um, on the macros tab, 
Uh, there should be a macro there called uh, challenge dice. Uh, Do you see it? No. no. It's, I see macro generator. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It. It's under... Uh, sorry. Did I roll this wrong? Oh, I see. Okay, oh, challenge, yeah, challenge dice. Uh, yeah, challenge dice. Uh, the rollable table, or maybe I, mm-hmm. I may not have done it, this one hundred. Uh, there's one up at the uh, up at the top. Yeah. And you can put it in bar, and yeah, it'll show yeah. at the bottom of your screen. If you don't see it below, like the yeah. names in roll twenty, you have to add it to the bar. So you got to click yeah. the check box in the macros tab, and then it will probably. I see it. Oh yeah, Did yeah. Okay. Yeah, challenge. I see it. So, um, and now I am blanking on how we determine how many challenge dice you roll. I think it is the number of challenge dice is equal to your discipline, but I want to check that because this is something that I should learn as well. Um, apologies for this. Um, let's just roll. Sorry about this, folks. I mean, I made it this far without having to dig through the rule book too hard, so I, th- I call this a success. Uh, Definitely a win. Yeah, 91. So page 91 of the core rule book. Okay, work. Whenever a character succeeds as part of an extended task, it will make work amount of work, which is marked off from the work track, is rolled from 5 to 20. That's fine. Character rolls that. Ah, so you roll two challenge dice plus an additional challenge dice equal to the discipline. So it would be two plus your command. Okay, that number of dice. So two challenge dice Mm -hmm. plus my command. Uh, So a grand... What's your command? Five? Five. So a grand total of seven challenge dice. Wow, that's actually pretty good. So... Now, if you wanted, um, you should be at three momentum, if I recall correctly. Um, so you can spend one of those momentum if you'd like to re-roll those zeros, or just take the six. Um, sure, we'll spend these momentum. Okay, so you're down to two momentum. Uh, so roll two challenge dice. And that's an additional one. So a grand total of seven. So this has a resistance of two, so you get five. So a grand total of five is done, added to the work track. And because you made five or more work, that's enough to achieve what's called a breakthrough. And a breakthrough reduces the uh, magnitude by one. And I forget what the magnitude actually means. Oh yeah, that's the number of breakthroughs that are needed before the challenge can actually just be completed outright. So magnitude of three now becomes magnitude of two. Uh, you have gained some very interesting insight into how the military cast um, deploys their, um, how they've been deploying their ships over the last little while, as well as um, the identities of those who might actually be in current command of the uh, regime. Uh, not their quote unquote Breen anonymous names, but their actual, their actual names. Mm-hmm. Uh, Fascinating. So, yes. <clears throat> uh, so feel free to roll again. Uh, let's see. So let me double check. Uh, let's see. Breakthrough is equal to magnitude. Task is complete. Ah, okay. Sorry. So you need two more breakthroughs that, or to complete the work before the task is completed. Uh, let's see. And because you've already broken one breakthrough, you add one more challenge dice to future work challenge dice rolls. Yes, I, I understand that this part's a little complicated to understand, but we're getting through it. We're learning. So feel free to make all those rolls again, uh, those uh, tests. All right. So tell the good people uh, how much they're rolling. Uh, so we're trying to beat a difficulty of... Uh, it's a difficulty two still. Nope, difficulty one, I should say. And magnitude two. So. So roll and presence and command again? Yep, Re- roll one dice, okay. present. Yep, and whoever's taking the lead, roll a full. Roll presence, command. 
Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Nope. Nothing. Not there. And here's an interesting thing for you, um, GM. Yep. I have interrogation, which means um, when I succeeded at a task to coerce someone to reveal information in a social conflict, you gain one bonus momentum, which may only be spent on the obtained information momentum spend. Ah, interesting. Are we are we I'm, interrogating them, though? I'm not entirely sure this counts as an interrogation. Okay. Yeah, because interrogation is more likely that they would be uncooperative, and thus you string them up and apply force as necessary. Instead I'm of, screwed. Yeah. Agonizer. <laughs> no, not the mirror universe. No, no, not mirror universe. Um, not yet, anyway. No, not yet. Uh, so if uh, the captain could please roll presence command. Uh, one more dice, please. Mom stick. I uh, mean, you've already succeeded, more. but you know. Mm -hmm. All from the name of momentum. Let's see. Let's see that one more dice. All right. There you go. There you go. So another three momentum. I believe you're now at five. Uh, who's keeping track? Uh, doesn't look like anyone is at the moment. Okay. Oop, I can get it. There, five momentum. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Erkin. Okay. Um, so you have, again, broken the challenge. So you roll a grand total of eight dice this time because you've already had one breakthrough. All right. That's an eight already. Ouch. That's pretty wow. good. You could spend a momentum and re-roll those zeros. Uh, sure. Uh, yeah, maybe well. This could put us over, over the top. Yep. So three challenge dice. All right. Give me a sec. Mm -hmm. Three chance. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, consider, the, consider them successfully fully debriefed. Um... At least to at least as well as debriefed as the six to eight hours of travel time allows. Mm -hmm. um, at the end, director Ch um, director Chalmers is has been scribbling and taking notes this entire time. Puts his pad down and on the way out of the quarters, he'll just uh, give you a hearty slap on the back and go, Captain, I am impressed. My my uh my uh, skilled sociologist would not have been able to do a better job. Well, thank you. I consider that high praise. And he'll quickly look at both the lieutenant commanders and say, "And you guys did a very use. Yeah, you, know, you guys were an extreme help as well, Captain. I think that your crew is going is shaping up very nicely. You, you and I would be in agreement." Thank who knew it would help when I started dancing? <laughs> Sorry, what was this about dancing? Uh, I said, who, who knew it would help when I started dancing? Uh, yeah, he did the Klingon limbo like nobody's business. Yeah. It's like real limbo, but with batlets. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't go low enough, you get you get cut by the batlet. <laughs> okay. Um, Bashir, you are on the bridge. Hi. Um, Let's go back to the bridge. Okay, Erkin is back there. Um, <laughs> Sheer is somewhere. Here he is. There. Okay. Uh, six straight hours pass. Um, it's by now. It's probably well into beta shift, but given the nature of the task. Yeah. Sheer has decided to pull a few extra duty hours. And you drop out of space and or you drop out of warp at the coordinates indicated and you see this vessel waiting for you. Just drop it here. Make it a little bit bigger so people can see it. It is an odd design, um, d definitely um, one that is fairly unique to Federation aesthetics. It looks more like a giant plus sign than anything else, but 
it's, it's yeah it is uh it is actually smaller than your ship so your ship is a scale five this ship would be a scale f uh pushing the boundaries of a scale three it's a fairly compact thing but it is oozing a oozing power and not in a bad okay. way this thing's just very powerful <laughs> Open hailing frequencies. All right. Um, a grizzled old man um, who whose best years of his life are behind him, but he doesn't seem overly... Prob, overly... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Grouchy. That, that he's... Get off my lawn. Yeah, he doesn't <laughs> look like a crazy old man. More like a wise old man. He... Uh, Stands at attention, and you see that he is a lieutenant commander. This is Lu I am Lieutenant Commander Jax of the uh, USS Contiki. Are you my cargo for the for the trip? Greetings. I'm Commander Bashir of the USS Nighthawk. We are supposed to rendezvous with you and transfer Commander Skinner, or sorry, Chalmers. <laughs> Commander Chalmers. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I can't get that on my head. You realize I'm not going to make if if he comes again, he's going to have an an attaché named Skinner. Yeah, Skinner. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes, Chalmers. Yes. Good. Excellent. And I'm prepared to take you to your destination. Estimated time, trip time will be about one day. So, you know, please uh, tell tell your uh. Tell your navigator to bring the ship to a full stop and do not engage engines until I tell him to. I will send the protocol over shortly. All right. We'll be waiting. Thank you. Bashir out. So I tell our uh, pilot to line up and uh, then I calm the captain and Chalmers and tell them that we are here and proceeding for further information. At that point, um, I'll come back to the bridge and just best to inform the Contiki of our, uh, our situation and tell them about the uh, tell them about the uh, recent uh, acquirements that we've made and to begin transferring them over if they're well enough. Mm -hmm. um, Captain or Lieutenant Commander Jax just shrugs and says, "We've got lots of space for them. This thing is pretty much engines and quarters." Mm -hmm. Well, in that case, um, if there's anybody else uh, down in sickbay that still needs to be treated, then by all means, uh, set up the Contiki for that and set up your medical staff, unless they're too critical to move, but it doesn't necessarily seem like that's the case. Other than that, um, while we're doing this uh, out-of-character question, mm -hmm. uh, while the Contiki, you know, shuttles up, shifts us off to the Lasai Expanse, uh, is it more like a slingshot sort of thing, or are they coming with us? Uh, they are opening the portal, and they will be basically dragging you through it so you, okay. you'll be in effectively a tractor beam okay i see all right we are in position all right and the the uss contiki will s swing around in front of you uh engage three separate tractor beams um a quick calm over says um uh, uh, uh the opening is going to be a bit rough for you non-slipstream folks yeah, well, want to hold on to something. Uh, at this point, I start. I mutter a prophet's prayer under my breath. All right, and with that, you enter quantum slipstream. Holy Jesus! It's as better as we thought. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, I'm going to end the session, and we will pick up next time wherever you guys end out. So, all right, sweet. Awesome. I hope everybody had fun. Uh, players stick around we'll have an after we'll have a post game chat but here is where i end the stream so th those of you who are listening thank you so very much i appreciate any feedback you have uh, again if you've missed part of the stream check out elhmk1 on youtube in the next couple days and the full vod will be available so thanks everyone goodbye <laughs>